Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Nicole, and today I have the pleasure of having Jenny Carr as my guest. Jenny and I both share a passion for helping families understand nutrition and how to use food to feel and function at our best. Um, and I'm really excited to delve into the topic with her of anti-inflammatory eating. And if that sounds like a big complicated thing to you, don't worry about it. Jenny's going to break it all down for us and give us some simple action steps that we can take um, to better support our kids. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about Jenny. She is a speaker, a leading inflammation expert, and the international bestseller, best-selling author of Piece of Cake, The Secret to an Anti-Inflammatory Diet. She survived a near-death experience due to an autoimmune condition, is healing through upholding anti-inflammatory living. Jenny is on a mission to help others do the same, whether it's recovering from an autoimmune disease, reversing chronic physical disorders, or easing behavioral and emotional conditions. Jenny specializes in helping families reverse these chronic symptoms by adopting and maintaining anti-inflammatory eating without feeling deprived or overwhelmed, which I think is key. So think cupcakes, <laughs> pizza, bread, muffins, the anti-inflammatory way. Jenny's been featured in all kinds of major media outlets and offers coaching as well as online courses and she is uh, a mom of two and lives in the mountains of Jackson Hole Wyoming Jenny welcome to the show thanks for being here thank you for having me I'm so excited to be here so let's delve into this because I know that you know the term anti-inflammatory eating can seem like a big gotcha. word and can feel oh, overwhelming and yeah. You know, I'm sure we have people going, what in the world? Like, what do I need to know now about that for my yeah, kids? Let's yeah. start out. Can you just um, talk about what inflammation is and how it's yeah. impacting us in ways that we might not even realize? Because I think that's a good starting point. Most people don't understand this. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, inflammation's become a buzzword in the last five to seven years, it feels like. Um, but still, it's a buzzword that we still don't really understand. And we don't always understand if it's really impacting us, right? Mm -hmm. And so the way I like to help people, the really simplified method of identifying if chronic inflammation is impacting you. And I use the word chronic because acute inflammation is when we break our ankle, when we, you know, sprain our wrist, or sometimes if we just get the cold or flu, like we, our body actually has inflammation that shows up to support the healing process. So that actually is beneficial for us. But chronic inflammation is this kind of slow smoldering inflammation, which I like to, um, swap out the word inflammation with toxins because really toxins are what cause so much chronic inflammation along with stress and, and some other things we can talk about here. But this chronic inflammation gives us chronic symptoms. So it's not like, you know, if you happen to get food poisoning or you happen to have a really random one-off um, health experience that doesn't feel good, right? That's not chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is showing up in our body when we have consistent um, belly aches or digestive disorders, bloating, chronic headaches, when we experience chronic skin conditions, it shows up uniquely for each person. So the reason it shows up uniquely is because it, inflammation targets the areas that we are most susceptible to. And sometimes that can be from genetic predisposition. Sometimes it can be from overuse. Sometimes it can just be an area in our body that isn't quite as strong as the others. So inflammation will go to those areas. So it shows up for us physically, right, mm -hmm. as some of those examples I just gave, but also it can show up, and especially in our younger generation, we're seeing this more and more, with behavioral symptoms, ADD, ADHD, my son had a sensory condition, um, as autism, it impacts people with autism, like there, there's a whole slew of behavioral and also chronic anxiety and chronic depression are directly linked to inflammation. So we're seeing the emotional, the behavioral, and the chronic physical symptoms are all tied with this inflammation. Mm -hmm. So if you're still like, ah, I'm still not totally sure if I have chronic inflammation, I like to do this little trick if you imagine that you have a magic wand, right? Mm -hmm. And just think if my body could feel like the most vibrant, amazing, like healthy body ever, and you had a magic wand and you could change anything, scanning from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, physically, what would shift? Mm -hmm. And this can be a tricky question because sometimes we get used to feeling bad, mm -hmm. feeling 
you know, these subtle, I remember when I would feel, I felt nauseous for years and I was tired for years and I just kind of said, oh, that's just me. That's my body. I'm just used to it. But that's not, you know, we actually can erase so many of those symptoms and feel vibrant health. Mm -hmm. So just take a moment to kind of scan your body and, and see like, what would I change that is a chronic whether, whether it's subtle and nagging, or maybe your body is screaming at you and is in a ton of pain, or you know there's a chronic illness you're, you're dealing with, all of those come from chronic inflammation. I think it's so true that we just um, you know, get used to some of those symptoms, and, and especially for kids, sometimes kids who have had things like chronic headaches or chronic tummy aches or, you know, itchy skin or whatever it might be, they don't even know that it could be any different, right? It's just always what their experience has been of being yeah. alive and being in the world. And so they don't even know that people aren't supposed to have those things. Um, and so I think that's a really good point to, to really stop and think for ourselves and for our kids what are the things that we're just sort of putting up with or that we've gotten accustomed to that maybe indicate that there's some of this inflammation going on? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really important. And you know, the, there's a quote from Katie Couric. I don't know if you've seen this um, or heard of this, but it's what she said in the, in the documentary fed up is that it is the first time in history that our youngest generation is predicted not to outlive their parents. Yeah. When I heard that, it like shook me to the core. Mm -hmm. And and the reason this is, is because of all the toxins in our society and our food and, and environmental toxins, stress, like all of these things that cause chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. So this is why I've really focused specifically on inflammation is because so often, even if we can't get a full diagnosis of what's going on, we just have all these different weird things and our body just feels off, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe we have a diagnosis, like I had a severe Lyme disease and a crazy parasite infection that put holes in my organs, ate away my endocrine glands, it almost killed me. Like that was, those were causing massive inflammation in our body. Either way, whether it's diagnosed or undiagnosed, if we can remove the chronic inflammation, we will feel better. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, you know, I often will describe, you know, the, the concept of inflammation to kids by, you know, kind of what you said earlier, that when we have an acute thing happen, like I'll say, well, if you get a cut on your hand or something like that, yeah. you want your immune system to respond to that. And you should have inflammation there for the healing process. That means your immune system is doing what it needs to do to heal that area. But sometimes our immune system gets stuck in a mode of fighting things in our body, and that's that chronic inflammation where that immune system is stuck, and so our body is like fighting and fighting and fighting these things that it yeah. shouldn't have to be fighting, and that's the stuckness then that we get into that pattern of having that immune response that then over time just makes us feel worse and worse and worse and gives us all of these symptoms. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great way to do it. And if anyone's listening and they're also trying to figure out like how to have this conversation with their kid, if they're like, oh, I think my child has inflammation. <laughs> so it's so important to help our children understand what's going on with yeah. our body, not just to tell them, right? Which I love the conversation you were just sharing. Yeah. Um, I like to make straw stick figures and then have the kids point to like, just put an X or mark different spots on the stick figure. The stick figure represents your body that doesn't feel great, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then you can write little notes up by the head. Like, Oh, I, it could even be like, I have a hard time making friends and maybe that's because they have anxiety or it could be like, there could be other reasons due to their health and well being that's stopping them from making friends or stopping them from achieving, you know, what they want to do in sports. Like it, it all becomes related and helping them First, identify how their body's feeling and how it's impacting them. I feel like that is such an important first step to get um, kids on board with this process, which I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I, I felt the need to say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's so true because the more that kids can understand about what's going on in their body, the more they are invested then in making some of the shifts and doing some of the things that we're going to talk about that will help with that. So, so I think that's great. Um, 
you know, you shared a little bit already about your story, but I know this is really a personal mission for you as far as helping you know, individuals and families, um, you know, regain their health through anti-inflammatory eating. Can you just briefly share a little bit about your personal story with that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's two different stories, which is why my first book, Piece of Cake, The Secret Chain Anti-Inflammatory Diet is, is, was inspired because I, I did almost die from Lyme and this parasite infection. I, I mentioned that it was so severe. It had gone into my brainstem. It had gone into my nervous system. I was bedridden for years. Um, and that's when you are a parent of two young children, mm-hmm. that is a whole, uh, whole process in life to have to figure out, right? Like you suddenly can't help your kids do homework. You can't cook and clean. You can't get out of bed. Like that's, that's a whole mm-hmm. different thing. We'll talk about it a different time. Yeah. Right. But the, the other story, my, uh, my next book that's coming out this fall, the clean eating kid that was inspired by my son. And I always say our children are our greatest teachers, mm-hmm. right? It is amazing. And so when my son was first born the first year and a half of his life, he was very sick. And at the time I knew nothing about inflammation. I, thought I ate healthy. I was an athlete. I used to run marathons. I'm like, Oh, I'm a healthy person. And I would get my son, you know, give him the organic formula or organic baby, uh, like granola bars, organic baby and health, health food products. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know is that they were chock full of organic inflammatory foods, just because it's organic doesn't always mean it's great. And, and what happened was he had tons of ear infections. So chronic ear infections, every other month he was on antibiotics for like a year. And I didn't know any better. I was, I was a first time mom and I just, I wanted to help my son feel better. And, you know, and so he had all these ear infections and he had chronic adenoid infections and chronic tonsil infections. He got abscesses in his throat. We were in the hospital and then out of the hospital four or five times multiple times when he stopped breathing, like his life was threatened. We, we ended up going to uh, primary children's hospital in Salt Lake City and to have his tonsils removed because the doctors locally wouldn't do it and because they were so poor so severely inflamed and um, after the surgery he had recovered but he wouldn't eat or drink so they wouldn't let him leave the hospital and they said take him for a little walk and see if that will get him you know if he'll get thirsty so we took him for like a five or ten minute walk down the hallway we came back and within about 12 seconds all of a sudden his monitors flatlined and he completely stopped breathing. Mm -hmm. And it was code blue sirens, like 12 doctors surrounding us and like seven seconds flat. And they're like, are you okay? And I said, I think, I I didn't even understand what's going on to be honest. And I said, I think I'm okay. What's happening? They said, we're bringing him to ICU. And I remember thinking I am not okay. (laughs) I'm not okay. So it was this, it was so many different chronic symptoms that kept building up, building up. And then we ended up, you know, in the hospital, we were in the hospital for a little over four weeks. Mm. Um, And when we came home, he ended up with a sensory condition. I don't know if he had it before and we just didn't know, or all of the medication that he had over that time. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we found out when he was one and a half, two years old, the sensory condition, um, you know, is on a spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. So kids can have a sensory condition and not be very impacted and others more severely impacted. He would get a drop of water on his shirt Mm -hmm. and he would scream and he tried to tear his shirt off and he'd say, it hurts, it hurts, mom, it hurts. Mm -hmm. He struggled with his focus in school. He struggled with transitions. He struggled with when he got frustrated, he couldn't communicate with friends. So he was having a difficulty making friends. Um, You know, he, he couldn't, we lived, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, it's snowing, it's freezing cold outside in the wintertime. He couldn't put multiple layers of clothes on to go outside at recess. It would take him the entire time to get dressed. From the time he was dressed, everyone else was coming in. Mm-hmm. And so when I finally figured out what was going on, because we just thought, oh, terrible twos. <laughs> when we finally figured out what was going on, I said, okay, I've changed my diet followed this anti-inflammatory protocol, which I'll share with you guys in a minute. My mom changed it. She started to heal from Lyme. I had all these chronic symptoms just due to the stress of having my child in the hospital. I was tired, bloated, gaining weight, hormones out of whack. And when we changed our diet, my mom and I, everything, all the symptoms melted. So I said, if it worked for us, let's do a science experiment. I love science experiments. Let's take two weeks, follow this protocol. I'm going to make everything for Tosh because he would come home and he'd eat clean and then he'd go to school and have snacks and lunch Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I made breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, snacks, everything for two weeks. And his sensory condition improved 
unbelievably in that two week period. And I said, okay, let's keep going. And two months, it was 85% better, wow. two months, 85% yeah. better, yeah. you know, and, and there's still traces. Like we still yeah. have pieces that we have to deal with, but you know, he's, he, he went, he went hunting with his grandpa this fall and he had jeans, which he never used to be able to wear jeans, jeans. And he went into the water. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is such <laughs> a big deal. <laughs> it's just amazing what he's able to accomplish since then. And that became my mission. Yeah. I have a little boy who now significantly, his life is significantly improved when he follows anti-inflammatory eating. So was mine, by the way. Mm -hmm. But at the time I was teaching and I was working like 55, 60 hours a week. I had a little, little nugget at home. Like, how do I do this in a way that is not overwhelming for me? And so that my son, I don't feel deprived. So it's not like a, you know, I don't want to have food. I don't want him to have food issues mm -hmm. growing up. And so how do we do that? And that really became my mission. I love it. And I know there's so many parents listening who can totally relate to your, um, you know, experience with your son around the sensory issues and just all of that. So let's yeah. delve into how you did this. Um, talk about what causes chronic inflammation. We've touched on that. And also then from a food standpoint, what the top inflammatory foods are, because I think that's really central to this discussion about what parents can yeah. start to do yeah. to impact this from a food standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. So you, the top, the top things that cause in chronic inflammation is diet. Diet is so huge. And it's probably the number one thing that impacts us because we eat every day and our food has drastically changed. So much of our food is food-like products rather than actual whole foods. So food is huge. Not getting enough water, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of drinking water, we drink coffee. Instead of drinking water, we drink juice for kids and sodas. And like we've replaced water with so many other beverages. And water is key to the methylization process that takes place in our liver and actually upregulates. So it opens up our detox pathways and allows for us to process toxins and inflammation. So besides just staying hydrated, there's like this other process that it supports for detoxing. That's really important. Um, stress. Stress is huge. And we've known this one for a very long time, right? I remember growing up and saying stress is the number one predictor of heart disease and heart attacks. And but what we didn't necessarily know at that time, or at least what wasn't mainstream media, was that that stress is causing chronic inflammation, right? And again, that inflammation is at the root. In today's modern day society, our kids are, and us, we, all of us, we're working so hard. There's not enough time in the day. So we extend our day into the evening. We get less and less sleep. There's more and more pressure on us to do more. There's even, I think, like a, a general societal belief that like the busier we are, the more like accomplished we are. Yeah. And, and, and our kids start to get that, right? Like I was looking at my kids' schedule yesterday for after school this winter. I'm like, this is crazy. We've got to like pare it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big one. And, and rest. So that, that really ties in with stress and being really busy. If we don't get enough stress, again, our body heals so much overnight. Our liver goes into over, um, overdrive at night to help, which the liver processes so many of our toxins, right? So if we're up, if we're not sleeping, if we're not resting, we can't regenerate the cells in our body the way that we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and what is the last one? Oh, the last one is just as our thoughts, right? We can be so critical of ourselves and, and that really ties into stress, but our, our own thoughts, our own mindfulness, if you want to call it or awareness, whatever it may be can have a huge impact. And, and I think that's especially important with all of us, but especially our children, mm -hmm. the, their social, emotional well being is, is, I want to say it's everything. It's not everything, but it's, it's close. It's close yeah. to everything. It makes a huge impact. So, so those, those as well as environmental toxins, and that's where like the Lyme and the parasites are environmental toxins or even household cleaning products or personal care products that we put mm -hmm. onto our body. All of those can have toxins in them, which can make a significant impact in the levels of uh, inflammation in the body. So that can, that's like, whew, okay, you just heard that. That's overwhelming. Right. <laughs> well, but I think it's important for people to understand that inflammation, you know, is 
um, exacerbated by a variety of things. And those are really yeah. many of the same areas that I talk about with families in terms of getting yeah. a handle on symptoms with their kids. You know, we're talking about food, stress, sleep, you know, all of those kinds totally. of things. So I think food is a really um, good place to start because it's a concrete place to start where we have control, right? Even yeah. as a parent, if you don't feel like you have control, you do have control over um, you know, the food that you're bringing into the house and what you're teaching your kids about food. So I think it's a really practical place to start. So let's talk about the top six inflammatory foods. What are, what okay. are the ones that really drive inflammation for us and for our kids? Yeah, and this is what I took out when I focused on Tosh and did that two week science experiment, right? This was kind of my protocol. And I'm going to, after I share this with you, even pare it down into a simpler way. So right. bear with me here. If this top six feels overwhelming, I have an easier solution even beyond, but awesome. here they are, right? Top six, processed sugar. There's over 50 names of processed sugar. It's crazy. And some of the names like brown rice syrup sound super healthy, highly processed, number one most inflammatory thing you can put into your body along with alcohol, which for kids, we don't have to worry about alcohol, but good to know as a parent, right? Yeah. So um, processed sugar. And by the way, um, I'm going to be giving you all a free copy of my book if you want. Awesome. And in the book, Piece of Cake, I list out these over 50 names of processed sugar just so that you can like get your eye on it and have a handle. Great. Yeah. So processed sugar, alcohol, wheat, and that, if you think about like our grandmother, the bread that she used to make, right? That was a totally different food product. Our wheat has been so highly genetically modified, highly processed. There's, unless it's non-GMO organic, which is really difficult to find for wheat, it becomes, um, there's tons of pesticides in it, Roundup, that there's a lot of stuff in the news about Roundup right now, causing cancer, et cetera. Um, so wheat has, is one of those top six inflammatory foods. Then we move on to cow dairy. And I specify cow dairy because cow has a protein molecule, which is quite large. And our bodies from the eight, from when we're born to around three or four, we actually create, um, and uh, what's the right word, an abundance of digestive enzymes mm -hmm. to help break down these large protein molecules. That's because from an evolutionary standpoint, we used to nurse our children for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So around age of three or four, those digestive enzymes begin to get a bit depleted and we can't break down the large protein molecules found in cow. However, goat and sheep milk and dairy have smaller protein molecules. So not for everyone. If you're, if you can't do casein, you know, casein and goat or sheep or cow, it's not going to work. But for a lot of people, when you're looking for a cow dairy alternative, especially when you've got younger children and trying to give them milk, a goat milk is a really great swap. Mm -hmm. um, so cow dairy is, is that number four, I think? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here, yep. processed sugar, cow dairy. Oh, so GMOs, genetically modified foods. is um, And the top GMOs are wheat, corn, and soy, mm -hmm. and cane sugar. But we're not eating processed sugar, so we don't have to worry about that <laughs> one. But wheat, corn, and soy. So if you buy anything with corn, wheat, or soy, which, by the way, is in like 97% of all pro food products, you want to make sure it's non-GMO and ideally also organic. That will make a huge difference. That causes leaky gut directly tied to autism, autoimmune disease, a lot of different components. Um, and then the last is just what I call inflammatory oils. And this is vegetable oils, canola oil, corn oil, mm -hmm. um, and even seed oils like safflower oil um, that have been heated. So if it's a seed oil and it hasn't been heated, awesome. But if it's been heated, it changes on a molecular basis and causes an inflammatory response. So we want to be careful of that because a lot of health food companies put um, safflower oil in like their chips, right? And those have been fried and heated and that causes an inflammatory response. Yes. Well, and I, you know, it's so helpful to have the specific, you know, inflammatory foods listed out. And I think this is why, you know, in general, when I talk with families about reducing the amount of processed foods in their diet, this is why, because yeah, yeah. so many of the ingredients and the things that you're talking about are 
in virtually every packaged processed food item. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that's the challenge, right? Is when you're feeding your kids that stuff, it's, it's easier and, and maybe it's stuff that they're used to, that their friends are eating that they like, but it's got a lot of these ingredients that really drive inflammation. So, um, so talk to us about your secret for following an anti-inflammatory diet, because I think what you said is so true. It's like, okay, now as a parent, I have this information. I know that these foods aren't great for my kid to be eating, might be causing or worsening some of the symptoms they're having, but oh my word, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah, where do I begin? How do I do this? That's like, when I, when I give this list, people say, well, that's everything. That's right. like, all food. Now we oh, can't no wait. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, we're doing the zero calorie diet. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there, there, I've... I've created this streamlined process. And what I realized is, you know, so often in our society, a clean, clean diet, we hear gluten-free and dairy-free. Those are like the big things, mm -hmm. gluten-free and dairy-free, which is great, right? Like, obviously yeah. those are some of the top six inflammatory foods. But here's what I've discovered, you guys, processed sugar, because it's the number one most inflammatory thing we can put into our body. The FDA actually came out with a statement a number of years ago saying that if it was put onto the market now, processed sugar would be deemed illegal and a toxic drug. Mm -hmm. The FDA is a very conservative organization that would not normally come out and say something mm -hmm. like this. And the big sugar corporation smacked that statement down. There was a massive lawsuit. But the fact that it came out, it shows how incredibly harmful processed sugar is to our body from an inflammatory standpoint. It causes toxins, right? Mm -hmm. So what if instead of focusing on gluten and dairy and inflammatory oils, like all these other things that can be overwhelming, what if we just focused on one thing? and that being processed sugar. Mm -hmm. What if we swapped processed sugar out with options that taste similar but don't cause inflammation, such as pure maple syrup, mm -hmm. raw honey? These are naturally occurring um, sugars, mm -hmm. right, that haven't been processed, that haven't been, that don't cause an inflammatory response. Um, whole fruit, dried mm -hmm. fruit. I like. I love baking with dates. I use dates in my bake stuff all the time. It tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. um, or you could even do like liquid stevia or monk fruit, which is not a sugar, but it is a naturally derived sweetener that also doesn't cause an inflammatory response. Um, and is a great way, like I use stevia in my kids' hot chocolate, right? With raw cacao, a little bit of stevia, some vanilla extract, some coconut milk it is like the best hot chocolate you've ever had in the world. So, so there's these ways that you can swap out the processed sugar with sugars that don't inflame. And when you do this, by default, those top six inflammatory foods fall to the wayside for the majority of the time. It's their cousins. And like you said, it's in all processed foods. So when you find a company that actually uses coconut sugar or uses pure maple syrup, not always, but more times than not, they are in integrity and they're really trying to make an effort to have their product um, stand for health. And so they also are non-GMO and they also are often gluten-free, right? Like they, they also typically follow uh, the elimination of those top six inflammatory foods. So focus on processed sugar, swap it out for the non-inflammatory sugars, start there. And, and actually that's what my, my book is really all about. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip and such a, just a simple starting point for people that if you're feeling overwhelmed at the idea of, you know, having to read labels and think about all these different ingredients that just focusing on reducing sugar and getting rid of processed sugars really does help you in all of those areas. And I think that's really true because if you start going to the store and looking at the labels or even what's in your cupboard right now, you know, looking yeah. at the, the ingredient labels on there, what you'll see is that a lot of those inflammatory ingredients tend to come together, as you said. So if it's got, you know, yeah. processed sugar in it, it tends to have a lot of the other things. That, and one of the cool things about you know, where we are now with people's awareness and companies trying to, you know, create products that meet the needs of people with chronic inflammation, people who are interested in, you know, better supporting their health with food. There's so many more options. 
You know, when yes. I was working with families 10 years ago, 15 years ago or more around removing gluten or not doing processed sugars or things like that, people were really stuck with having to make everything from yes. scratch, you know, figuring yes. it out themselves. And now yes. today there's so many more options, not just recipe wise, but yes. even package stuff because companies are responding to that. So if you as a parent have been reluctant to consider you know, shifting some of the foods that you're feeding your kids because you think it's going to just be an impossible thing to do. I really think you'll be pleasantly surprised how many options there are, even for, you know, packaged things that you can send in lunches or stuff like that. There's just a lot more available now that fits within the realm of, of Jenny, what you're talking about with trying to get rid yeah, of these, yeah. you know, primary inflammatory kinds of yeah. ingredients. It's so huge. And I think it speaks to, you know, the movement that mm -hmm. is taking place. People are recognizing, our food companies are recognizing, our society is recognizing how important food is. Food is medicine mm -hmm. and it has the power to heal us or, or degenerate the cells in our body, truly, to degenerate our health and well-being. And, and the fact that there are so many um, companies that are standing up in integrity, and there's a lot that are sneaky about it and not in integrity. So mm -hmm. right. filtering right. through those, it can be a little bit of a process. But once you do, right, like it, it is opens up the door to, okay, I've got soccer practice, my kid's starving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have like 10 minutes instead of going to McDonald's and going through the drive through I'm going to run to the grocery store. I know what to grab. That's easy and quick. And that's huge, which is what the, the clean eating kid, my book that's coming out, um, the second half of the book, I walk you down the grocery store aisle oh, nice. and I show you all of the different foods that I put in my grocery cart. What's really interesting is that since writing this book, right. And it's, it's, it's under editing now. So it's been a few months that it's been completed. And just in the time that I wrote this book to now, so many more food companies are popping up that are that I'm like, I need to add more to this book. It's so cool to see this movement that's taking, taking hold. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. And I love that you really break it down for people. And I think that, you know, I just want to encourage people, take that first step of starting to look at the processed sugars and just looking yeah. at the chemicals in the food in general. You know, I always say to people, a good rule of thumb is if you're looking at an ingredient label and you can't pronounce many of the ingredients or they're not things that you could like pull out of your pantry and say, oh yeah, I cook with this. It's probably yeah. not something, you know, yeah. that, that's going to support yeah, inflammation totally. reduction. It's not something that's going to support health. And so just, yeah. you know, giving people some simple tools for starting to look at that, I think is great. Um, now, yeah. You've got so many great resources available to people online, on your website, and I know that you're running a um, Clean uh, Eating Kid Challenge that's coming up. So, so tell us all about that. How can people yeah. you know, access some of the resources that you've got and, and, and tap into what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. So if you don't, I'm going to add one more thing, if that's yeah. okay, because I, as we're finishing this conversation, I'm like, I can't leave the audience without this one other piece of advice. And that is when you guys, when you are looking to swap out processed sugar, especially for your children, they, there's a real addiction that takes place when we have processed sugar in our body, a chemical reaction. And so the cravings become really intense when we take them to get away for a couple of weeks. So having sweet treats on hand that are clean, that are non-inflammatory and letting your kid, like, just let them have them, let them like choose them, go to the grocery store and, and really um, try not to restrict that too much to begin with. That is a key piece to moving away from processed sugar. I just had to add that because it's, it's so, so important. Um, no, so, and, I'm, and I'm glad you did because the, the sugar detox thing is a real thing. Like that really happens and yeah. it happens for us as adults yeah. too. So support yourself and yeah. your kid by having some, you know, sweet things yeah. that don't have the processed sugars uh, available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Do it together. Um, so, so you can find out more and you can learn more about what we're talking here. I am running a clean eating kid challenge. It's actually called the clean eating kid challenge. You can go to www.thecleaneatingkidchallenge.com and sign up. 
you will get a free copy of my advanced reader, uh, a free copy of my advanced reader book. So the right. Queen Eating Kid, which has not come out to anyone, like no one else has seen this. Um, so I'm super excited. Like I said, it's still under additions, but you're going to see, you will be able to walk through the grocery aisle with with me, see images of all the foods, ingredients. So it'll give you so many ideas of what to put in your pantry and so many great food swaps for you. It also walks through those top six inflammatory foods, how to swap them out, tricks to get your kids to eat more um, or drink more water and, and move their body, like really adopt this, this anti-inflammatory living and lifestyle as well. Um, and so again, that's at www.thecleaneatingkidchallenge.com. You can also view my website at jennycarhealth.com, J-E-N-N-Y-C-A-R-R, health. Great. And we'll have those links available um, in the show notes as well on the website so that people yeah. can um, access those and, and get those resources. And I really appreciate you providing people with, um, you know, a PDF copy of that book that's coming out because yeah. I think that's going to be so helpful to practically walking um, everybody yes. through how to do this. And I think that's one of the challenges, right, is sometimes as parents, we know what we're supposed to be doing, but in the busyness of life and just the overwhelm of life, the how to do it or the actually doing it can be the barrier there. And what I love about what you're doing with people and, and the book and just all the information that you're providing is you really focus on the here's how to do this um, yes. because you've done it as an individual, yeah. as a parent with your kids. And, and I just, I think that's, that's really awesome. Well, it's the gap between knowledge and action where so many of us fall down. We all, most of us probably know sugar is right. not great for us, right? But the, the, the application, like mm -hmm. you said, and, and so that is my challenge because again, I had this little boy whose life completely transformed when he ate this way. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to apply this for the next 18 years of his life? I had to find an answer. Yeah. And so the simpler we can make it and the tastier we can make at the same time, <laughs> that is where the application becomes, you know, becomes quite easy once you take a few weeks to adopt and, and kind of work through just changing things a little bit. Awesome. Well, Jenny, I really appreciate you taking time to be on the show and sharing your personal story and your practical tips. I know that people will find those helpful. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being here. Your work is amazing and I'm just really honored to be alongside you. So thank you. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners out there, um, check the show notes to be able to get the information on those links that Jenny provided and we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.